Hi. So I've been receiving some questions about some of the basics of Google Classroom. Um, so I just wanted to do a quick little video to just share some, some insight into some of the very, very basic pieces of Classroom, like how to post an assignment, how to um, post an assignment, the same assignment to multiple of your classes, um, how to schedule an assignment, um, and just kind of what what your powers are as far as assignments assignments go in the hub of Google Classroom. So first thing that you need to know is that the first screen that students come to in their classroom is the stream. This stream gets very cluttered for students, and that's important to know, especially as you're starting with classroom. If you're starting, blank slate, organize it. Make sure it's organized because if it looks a little overwhelming to you, it's 10 times that to students. So this area is going to end up having on students after I post multiple assignments over days, even over the course of the year, I it will say Amy Almada posted the name of the assignment and it will be a link. Amy Almada posted, Amy Almada posted. And it gets very cluttered. Some of my students try because they look at the most recent post and they try to find what they're looking for here, but it's very difficult, especially if a student um, struggles with organization. So this area, I tell my students kind of to ignore. I don't really use it that much. Um, it is meant more for creating schedule and creating schedule and scheduling announcements. So if you wanted to post a quick announcement to them, but even those announcements get lost um, in all of the other things that keep getting updated. This also, um, it's important to know that if you do not disable or um, you allow the students to comment, they can all be seen here. Um, so just be aware of that. Sometimes students, you know, they realize what they can do and they start having a full on conversation. Um, just make sure you're monitoring it. If you want commenting, commenting disabled, please, you, you know, that it's just right up here in um, the scheduling, um, the settings icon, apologize. So you can um, allow students to comment on the stream, or you can say that um, they can post even onto the stream. I don't really like allowing either. I usually, as a fifth grade teacher, do only teachers can post or comment. Um, again, that's something that's really important to talk about if you are adding any co-teachers because they may be wanting to use something and you may be wanting to not have that. Um, so just know that that is, is a thing. Um, also, just while I'm here, I want you to know that there is the capability for guardian summaries, especially in this time that families are trying to keep up and make sure that their children are not falling behind with this remote learning. Um, guardian summaries right now is turned on. You're able to see a quick example of what this looks like. If you add um, an email and attach it to you, the student, and I'll show you where you can do that, Every, however often the parents decide, they can click on the frequency. It could be every week. Um, it, again, is up to them frequency-wise, but they get a little summary um, based upon the work that you've uploaded. So if you have this on, the best advice I can tell you, from teacher to teacher, is to be on your game with due dates and looking at things because if you have a due date that you put on that assignment and that student doesn't give it to you, doesn't actually click submit, then the parent could get a summary that says missing work. And that can go zero to 60 very quickly. Um, so I recommend to new teachers to not have this on um, as you're getting used to it. Or if you have this on, do not put due dates because that sends a message to parents that they think is coming from you saying my child um, that their child is missing 
this assignment, this assignment, and that causes a lot of panic, especially in this time when panic is high already, I strongly recommend just being extra careful with it. Um, all right, so as we go back, we're gonna go to classwork, that's where you post an assignment, and we're gonna go just to assignment. It's important to know that these other things are here the quiz assignment is the same as assignment, but it just links a Google form. So if you were lazy and didn't want to go into Google Forms on your own and make it, you could click here and then start making your quiz from their little um, shortcut to it. Question is just posting a question. It could be a quick poll. They have the multiple choice or short answer. And it's important that you know, even though it looks like it's public, students cannot see each other's responses for that. And material, um, that is different than an assignment typically, or what Google originally set out for materials was if you wanted to post like a syllabus or things that students would always be using, you would click on material. Um, I use material if I am posting something that I don't plan on assessing at all. Um, and it's not something that students have to turn in. So for example, if I was just posting a link to a website that I wanted students to use as a resource, um, I would post it as a material. So then there would be no due date and um, no making copies for separate students. It's just purely material. You can reuse posts. And then topic, I strongly suggest thinking about how you want this space organized. If you are purely an ELA teacher, um, and this is just an ELA classroom, then you will have your topics organized very differently than a math teacher who's just organizing a math classroom. If you are an EL, um, ELA math social studies science teacher that you're, you know, what elementary school teachers have traditionally been, um, not departmentalized, and you only want to have one class, not separate classrooms for each, you may want your topics to be math, science, ELA, uh, social studies. You may be saying, I'm, I'm a reading specialist and I want my topics, I want it to be arranged for students by Monday and the date, Tuesday the date, Wednesday the date, Thursday the date, Friday date, so you just have it clear to them each week what you want to be putting in there for them. Um, that is that is cool too. It's whatever works best for you with it, but I strongly encourage using topics because otherwise all of the assignments will be jumbled. And organization is important for adults. It's, as you know, extremely important for, for students. So let's go right to the assignment. Really, really simple here. You're going to, I'm going to just say sample assignment. If you are um, worried about keeping track of things, you may want to put the date in the assignment as well. Um, you'll learn instructions. You can add those in as you see fit, things you'd want students to read and do before they actually click. So you, then you're going to click and you can add things from anywhere here. Google Drive is where I like to go because I then know that I can use these items to um, go to the masses. I can use them and I can have Google automatically make copies for me. So I'm just going to click on sample assignment here, it's just a blank Google Doc I have. This is where you can click and you have the option. If you just wanted students to be able to see what you have in here, you click view. If you want students, every student who has access to, access to it to be able to edit that one document, you'd click students can edit. That means all students would be in that one document. Or the most popular, which is make a copy for each student. That generates a copy of whatever you have here, um, and it goes and goes to each student for you. So over here is where you have a lot of other choices. Depending on what you plan on doing for grading, um, you do have the option of doing an ungraded assignment too, which is important to know. Um, and you also have the option 
to give it to all of your students. Or if I had students listed in this fake class right now, which I don't, they'd all be listed here and there'd be a checkbox that I could only assign this to certain students if I wanted to be differentiating. If I'd like to assign this to multiple classes, this exact same assignment, I could go and I just click on the classes I want it to go to. Um, remember what I said about due dates? Be super careful because if any parents are connected to their student, it is going to come up as a missing assignment the minute it passes that due date and it's not submitted. Because we know, especially if your students are just getting familiar with this whole process, they are bound to forget to click submit, um, especially if it's in like a Google Slides where they have to go back to classroom to pick to click turn in. My students often forget, um, even though they did all of the work and it's there and I can see it, they just didn't click submit. So we'd hate to have a freak out. So um, just be very, very conscious of what due date and everything connects to that topic. This is where you could organize um, and make that section heading. If you did not already have a topic existing that you wanted it to go under, you could create a topic. So I'm going to pretend as though this goes under math. All right. And yes, there is a, um, a whole possibility with rubrics. Um, if you are looking to upload a rubric and use that there, I am not going over that feature today. Um, if anyone's interested in that, let me know. And then I could click assign. If I click assign, that would go to everyone in just this fake class because I did not click on others. It would go to them now. If I don't want it to go to them now, I have a couple other options. I could save this, which means I'd have to come back to it and remember to post it. Or I could schedule this to be posted on another date. And I can even do it down to the minute that I'd like it posted. So I'm um, just going to share a little bit that I've learned in the last two weeks of distance learning. I've learned that my students, sometimes I have friends who log on very early or even um, a day before and over the weekend and they see an assignment and they do it and they do it. Um, it's not that I'm trying to stop them from being able to, not trying to prevent access, but they don't have everything that I need them to have yet to be successful with it. So that's why I hesitate with just posting assignments. I always schedule them for when I know that I want my students to have access to them. So I usually put like 8.30 a.m. because that's when I wouldn't mind my students being able to have access to it and just making sure you're clicking the appropriate date. When you do, um, so let's just pretend we'll do this for 8 a.m. on the 6th, which is next Monday, you'll see that it's dull here. Um, it's kind of faded out. Students can't see this on their view. That is only for a teacher and your co-teachers can see it. So you also can always go back in. If you change your mind, you could delete it or you can edit that assignment. One important thing while I'm back here that I just want to make sure that is clear. With assignments, you can schedule if you only have one assignment. If you are trying to create an assignment and you add whatever you'd like to add, right? Let's just pick something. We'll do this blank quiz. And blank quiz, because it's a Google Forms, I don't have to click to make a copy. That's only something that I would have to do if it was like in slides or if it was on docs, um, something that they would need to have more than just a link, which is what this is. Um, sample quiz 100 points i'm not going to do a due date i'm going to have this go to the fake class and let's say that i did this to a fake class and i did it to another class i did it to two classes you're going to notice i don't have the capability to schedule anymore i am not totally sure why that is to be entirely honest with you but it is something that's important to know. 
if you are a, an itinerant teacher and you are looking right now to schedule something and um, send it out to multiple classes, you can send it to multiple classes um, at once with that check feature, but you cannot schedule it to be posted in advance right now. And again, I'm not sure. I'm going to look into that a little bit more because that's definitely something that's been bothering me. Um, but it's just important to know. All right. So again, um, today we talked about, and you'll see I this came up here as a draft. Another thing students cannot see. It's just on the teacher end. Um, we went over how to post an assignment, what the stream is, um, how we should be organizing using some sections that we can schedule assignments to one class. We can post assignments to multiple classes, but they just cannot be scheduled to multiple classes. Um, you learned where you can make a copy for each student um, of a Docker slides, and you learned the importance of just really thinking about, do I want to put a due date in? Do I want parents to be connected? And just thinking about kind of the ripple effect. Yes, it keeps parents in the loop, but you just need to know what you're signing up for, that you do have to be on your game with follow through so that parents are not getting um, information that is either misleading or inaccurate. All right. I hope that this was helpful and answers some of the questions that were coming in.